Le Président, veuillez vous asseoir. Nous reprenons la séance. La parole est à la coprocureur nationale. Mais avant, Maître Hong Mr. President, as my client, Mr. Yangsari, has his back problem and Mon he cannot de sit in the de dos. Ne peut room. I would like to request to have him assis. monitor the proceedings in the room Je downstairs. Je donc qu'il puisse suivre l'audience depuis for, la cellule de détention also for this du tribunal. Session. Et thank cela vaudra aussi pour la séance the de president, cet après-midi. Le Président. Oui, merci, Maître. Thank you, Council, for Mr. Insari. Through the request by Mr. Insari, by his Council, La to follow the proceedings Chambre entend donc cette demande in de the designated par room downstairs de pouvoir suivre l'audience depuis system. le système audiovisuel installé dans la cellule du tribunal. The Chamber is of the view that The brief opening statement La chance the accused que les brèves remarques, déclarations liminaires. And also to balance the rights of the accused, the presence of the accused is important. Toujours dans un souci de trouver un équilibre des droits des accusés en procès. La présence de l'accusé est important pour démontrer aux parties et au public que l'accusé peut entendre les accusations qui pèsent sur lui. C'est pourquoi la Chambre rejette la demande de l'accusé de pouvoir suivre l'audience depuis la, salle, la cellule de détention du tribunal. The chamber would also like to remind the accused that you may make a La frequent visit to the bathroom as necessary as we informed earlier in the initial hearing. We would like now to give the floor to the national co-prosecutor. Je laisse maintenant la parole à la coprocureur. National Co-Prosecutor, thank you, Jonas. I'd like now to continue the opening statement. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je vais maintenant poursuivre. Everyone was subjected to criticism and self-criticism sessions. Tout le monde, For donc, example, during group des meetings de at the Sri Ambal Southfields, Workers were constantly criticized for being lazy, not working hard enough, and missing their family members. Again, indoctrination was reflective of the CPK policy put in place by the leadership of the CPK. Indoctrination était le reflet de la politique du PCK. This is what mis en place par les dirigeants du PCK. Voici ce que Sampan aurait dit lors d'une séance d'indoctrination politique pour les intellectuels qui étaient rentrés au Cambodge et qui avaient été emprisonnés par le PCK. The first thing you have to do la première chose que vous devez faire est de détruire la propriété privée. To destroy material Private property. Détruire la propriété privée matérielle. Pour ce faire, evacuation of the towns. La méthode appropriée était l'évacuation des villes. Private property is more dangerous. Mais la propriété privée intellectuelle It ou spirituelle everything est plus dangereuse. Think is yours. Elle comprend tout ce que vous estimez everything être that you à think vous. Exist tout ce qui existe selon vous in relation to yourself, en relation avec vous-même, soit à vos parents. Your family votre famille and your wife. votre épouse at each of the five sites severe punishments were à chacun des cinq sites out for trivial offenses being too sick or exhausted to work 
des écarts euh, euh, les mêmes plus insignifiants recevaient des punitions sévères être trop malade ou trop épuisé pour travailler gagner de la nourriture incapacité à respecter les quotas mouvement non autorisé ou demander à avoir des membres de sa famille incroyablement même une incapacité à respecter le quota de travail était punie par un retrait des rations de nourriture et une augmentation du quota. D'autres punitions pouvaient inclure des mauvais traitements physiques, coups de fouet ou de bâtons de bambou, l'emprisonnement, la torture et même l'exécution. Dans bien des cas, les gens attrapés en train de voler étaient tout simplement exécutés. Voici comment un ancien travailleur au barrage du 1er janvier a décrit les punitions administrées contre ceux qui étaient accusés de ne pas travailler assez fort. Des fois, les chefs de l'unité mobile emmenaient la personne à être punie dans une cage faite de petites manches de la taille d'un poignet avec des trous d'où on pouvait voir la personne enfermée à l'intérieur. Cette cage ressemblait à celle où l'on enferme les oiseaux. On donnait à la personne à manger seulement une fois par jour simplement pour qu'elle ne meure pas. Dans les méthodes utilisées pour identifier et détruire ces preuves recueillies montrent une incroyable cohérence, remarquable d'ailleurs, dans les méthodes utilisées pour identifier et détruire les ennemis supposés sur ces cinq sites de travail. Les victimes étaient arrêtées la nuit, étaient attachées ou on leur mettait des entraves, puis emmenées. Certaines des personnes envoyées pour euh, être rééduquées revenaient, alors que d'autres disparaissaient à jamais. Un travailleur au barrage de Trapeng Thmo décrit l'exécution, une exécution quand il a été témoin à quelques 200 mètres de, de son dortoir. J'ai entendu qu'on avait ordonné au prisonnier de creuser sa propre tombe. On lui a demandé de s'asseoir au bord de la tombe et on l'a frappé avec le manche du cou avant de pousser dans la fosse. À ce moment-là, j'avais vu la victime creuser la fosse à leur pleure. Le PCK a retiré toute valeur à la vie au barrage de trappés en trois. Les femmes enceintes étaient jetées dans les fondations de pont, car les cadres du PCK étaient d'avis que cela rendrait le barrage plus robuste. Un jeune travailleur décrit un tel événement. Les Khmer Rouges ont attaché une femme enceinte puis l'ont frappée et l'ont jetée dans la fosse au premier pont du barrage de Trapéantement. Les tueurs étaient vêtus de noir. J'ai vu de mes propres yeux cette scène d'exécution. Quand elle, elle a été jetée dans la fosse, puis les tueurs ont jeté des pierres par-dessus. Un témoin déclare au Saline de Sreyambel, les femmes étaient arrêtées simplement parce qu'elles étaient à côté des pompes d'eau la nuit. À l'aéroport de Kampong Chnang, un ancien cadre du PCK décrit comment des soldats étaient arrêtés sous les armes, pour euh, avoir euh, cassé une ou de s'être disputé ou d'être malade trop souvent. Les travailleurs ont aussi été envoyés dans des centres de sécurité pour euh, y être détenus, interrogés, torturés et exécutés. Ceux qui ont été exécutés au barrage qui ont été arrêtés plutôt au barrage du 1er janvier ont été envoyés au centre de sécurité de Wat Barai Chondak, où ils y ont été détenus dans des conditions épouvantables avant d'être interrogés, battus et torturés.
It has been estimated that as many as 25,000 people On died at this security office. À ce centre de sécurité, 25 000 personnes auraient perdu la vie. At many forced labor sites, conditions were so sites unbearable. Sur plusieurs sites de travail forcé, les conditions étaient insoutenables. Were driven si to insoutenables take que les travailleurs lives. Étaient force, étaient the evidence on the cash file shows that at Kampung Chnang Airport construction site, laborers committed suicide weekly by throwing themselves under the wheels of trucks, rollers. Se jetant de sous rollers. les roues de camions at the ou de gros fields, numerous women take their own lives by hanging se themselves en se pendant, or drinking poison. Ou en buvant du poison. Others drowned in the ocean while trying to sont escape dans the in intolerable conditions. Aux conditions intolérables. The evidence will show that the CPK cadres who were the Il direct perpetrators of the PCK, crimes I have described crime acted décrit, strictly in accordance with the orders and policies issued by the accused. Donné par les accusés. These accused not only directed the les commission of these crimes, but were also crimes, kept informed about the conditions on the ground through regular visits sur le terrain, and a system of communication and reporting, et un de which the international co-prosecutor will describe later. Co -procureur international décrira plus tard. I will now provide an overview of the alleged facts relating to the second forced movement, un survol, euh, the second sur crime, allégués, dans which le will be the subject of this first trial. Déplacement de population, second forced movement, crime qui fera du premier procès. as Déplacement my de colleague will describe later, in September and October 1975, the en septembre et en octobre CPK 1975, le PCK a mass force transfer a in which at least 500,000 people dans lequel were sent au from moins the east, un south-west de and west zones de la zone to Batambong and Sud-Ouest Pursat provinces in the north-west zone. Pursat, dans la zone nord the majority of victims were new people, la majorité des victimes that is, urban du peuple dwellers nouveau, who had already been expelled from the déjà cities été early des in the year. Plus tôt dans Within only months of settling in rural areas, these people were again uprooted in furtherance of CPK's policy PCK of enslavement and forced labor. The standing committee of the CPK had resolved in August 1975 to increase the rice production in the northwest of the zone. Du nord to do this, the committee decided faire, that the labor force in the northwest was to be expanded drastically, and that it was Imperative to add four or five hundred thousand people to the population in the northwest. La population du nord Once again, hundreds of thousands of civilians found themselves forced to Une pack up what des little de remained de of their lives de and begin another mass exodus. Et de s'embarquer. Un autre herded like de animals Mené comme un troupeau, on the strict orders of CPK sous les des cadres du CPK. Just like in April 1975, tout comme en avril 1975 those who refused to comply refused to faisaient face à une mort presque certaine. In the words of one evacuee who was moved to Selon Pusat, les mots, d'un des évacués qui avait été envoyé à Pursat. Nobody dared to refuse. Personne n'a osé refuser. The people were afraid. They had to force themselves to leave. Les habitants avaient peur. Et the Khmer Rouge told us in that meeting partir. in July 1975 that les Khmer Rouge nous ont dit pendant la réunion refused, en juillet 1975, juillet 1975 que si nous refusions de partir, l'encart nous amènerait pour être réeduqués. Return. Les gens savaient que ceux qui avaient été emmenés pour y être rééduqués n'étaient jamais rentrés au village. Plusieurs moyens ont été trains, utilisés pour transporter ces gens. Boats, 
and arts camps. Des camions. Many walked the entire journey. Des navires During the transfer, the victims remained under the watchful eye of the CPK cadres. Les victimes étaient sous le vigilant des cadres du CPK, du PCK, armés or exhaustion. Beaucoup sont morts de famine One ou d'épuisement. Un travailleur des chemins de fer du PCK qui a été témoin du transfert forcé a témoigné en ces mots. No one could leave as they were guarded. Personne ne pouvait Those sortir sick, car ils étaient surveillés. Just die there. Celles qui étaient malades In book, sont mortes. When the war was over, Dans son livre Elizabeth Les larmes du Cambodge, Becker Elizabeth Becker a witness accounts of the des train depot, témoignages thousands of aux évacués à la gare de Poursat, où des milliers d'évacués ont campé en attendant d'être déplacés. Jonché d'excréments humains, l'endroit grouillait de mouches. Il n'y avait pas assez à manger, mais rien pour s'étendre par le sol. Il n'y avait pas assez d'eau à boire, sans parler de pouvoir se laver des cadavres jonchés de la puanteur des excréments humains et des animaux devint insupportable. Des victimes interviewées par Ben Kiernan confirment nombreuses morts au point de transfert à Poursat. A witness interviewed by OCIJ Un témoin entendu par les juges d'instruction a décrit comment elle a perdu ses deux jeunes enfants pendant le périple. Son fils, qu'elle transportait dans un panier alors qu'elle marchait, est mort. Son corps gonflé de maladie. La nuit suivante, alors qu'elle était transportée dans un camion, sa fille, à peine âgée d'un an, est morte dans ses bras. Pour ces deux occasions, la, demande, la mère a demandé au cadre du PCK la permission de pouvoir enterrer ses enfants. Et chaque fois, on lui a simplement ordonné de remettre les corps au soldat. Quand les évacués arrivaient à leur destination ou des villes, ils ont été mis dans des zones éloignées des villages qui avaient été détruits. Ils n'avaient que très peu de biens et on leur a dit de There construire leurs propres abris. Il y avait qu'il y avait une masse de gens dans la forêt. Il n'y avait pas de maison. Nous devions couper du bois pour construire les abris nous-mêmes. D'autres devaient vivre et les stables à ciel ouvert dans de grands halls ou même dans des écuries ou sous les demeures du peuple de base local qui, avant la Révolution, était un endroit qu'on a utilisé pour les animaux. À leur arrivée, les évacués ont dû continuer à poursuivre leur travail manuel sous la supervision des cadres du PCK. Une fois de plus, la famine, and la maladie, l'exposition aux éléments et le manque de soins médicaux ont causé la mort de milliers de personnes. Le transfert de centaines de milliers de personnes a causé une famine généralisée dans la zone nord-ouest. Il n'y avait eu aucun préparatif pour s'assurer que les zones recevant les évacués puissent avoir la nourriture suffisante pour les nourrir. Comme Ben Kierlin le remarque, le centre du parti n'avait envoyé, pas envoyé de riz dans le nord-ouest pour aider dans ces périodes maigres. This is how one witness who was forcibly transferred to the Bakan district described the deaths in his commune. This is how one witness who was forcibly transferred to the Bakan district décrit les morts dans sa commune. Most of the deaths were due to starvation. La plupart des habitants, at least ten people per day, died of starvation. 
Il y avait the Khmer Rouge au moins 10 habitants qui sont morts de faim par jour. Les Khmer Rouges jetaient et les cadavres dans une fosse qu'ils n'ont même pas comblée avec de la terre. Un autre témoin estime le bilan du nombre de morts de faim en raison de famine in a comme allant jusqu'à 70 à 80 personnes par jour dans une district. seule coopérative dans le district de Pré. According Mert to Pré. a resident of the same district who was interviewed Selon un résident by de ce même district qui a été entendu par Ben Tiernan, à la fin de 1975, 400 of 5, des 5000 travailleurs de son unité late. étaient morts. At the hospital, l'hôpital Cisopon, starving patients cut les patients human flesh affamés from corpses ont dû couper de la chair des cadavres à côté d'eux et l'ont fait cuire pour the la manger. Les politiques d'exécution et les punitions brutales were, qui étaient la marque de commerce des Khmer Rouges faisaient partie de la vie quotidienne pour la population, population transférée dans la zone nord-ouest. Zone. One witness states that Her arrival in the northwest marked the Un témoin rappelle que à son arrivée dans la zone nord-ouest, ça a été le début d'une déshumanisation totale. Elle décrit une exécution qu'elle a, dont elle a été témoin. I heard a man begging for mercy. J'ai entendu un homme Out of curiosity, I went closer pitié, par curiosité, and I saw a man from the west je me suis approché. Et j'ai vu un homme torse nu avec les mains attachées dans le dos et entouré de quatre ou cinq Khmer rouges. L'homme était maintenu debout par deux Khmer rouges. Un troisième homme a pris un couteau et lui a ouvert le ventre alors qu'il était encore vivant. Pulled out his entrails to wrench Il a out sorti les entrailles liver. et lui a arraché le foie. What followed was more purges and killings in the northwest zone. While the exact death toll resulting from the second force transfer will likely never be known. D'autres purges et d'exécutions dans la zone nord-ouest. Bien que le bilan de résultat de ce deuxième transfert forcé ne sera peut-être jamais connu, il est clair que ce crime a mené à des dizaines de milliers de morts. Voici comment David Chandler, un historien et un expert qui a témoigné devant la Chambre de première instance dans le procès numéro 1, décrit l'effet sur les victimes et le régime complet d'ambivalence sur les innocents. L'ambivalence du régime par rapport à l'énormité des souffrances des femmes. Ces hommes et femmes ont été forcés de travailler dans des rizières, des canaux, des barrages, des villages, dans des forêts pleines de paludisme. Des dizaines de milliers de personnes sont mortes de malnutrition, de maladies, d'exécution et de surménage. When they became known, ces morts, distress the authorities in Phnom Penh. Une fois connus, ont perturbé les autorités à Phnom Penh. Only to the they indicated that Mais enemies were at work simplement behind pour jusqu'au point où ils ont indiqué que des ennemis travaillaient they were so dans l'ombre. And class enemies le peuple of the nouveau, parce qu'il était si nombreux et qu'il s'agissait d'un ennemi de classe de la révolution. As my fellow co-prosecutor will illustrate, contemporaneous evidence on the case file jetable. confirms that the party center was Comme duly informed about these deaths Comme in the North West. Comme le international l'indiquera, des éléments de preuve dans le dossier confirment que le centre du parti était informé de ces morts dans le Nord-Ouest. The accused have also been charged with persecution of Buddhists. La persécution des Bouddhistes maintenant. And I will now deal briefly with the Les accusés ont aussi to this crime. été accusés de la persécution des bouddhistes. Et je From vais expliquer brièvement les preuves. Le à partir de 1975, les dirigeants du PCK ont lancé campagne de suppression de la religion. Une 
des policies implemented de, through a variety de of criminal acts, including cette the disrobing of mines and their enslavement at forced labor camps, et les réduire en esclavage dans des camps de travaux forcés, ritual bannir toute ceremony. forme de, ritu de rite bouddhiste et cérémonie, the destruction of places of worship and sacred artifacts and the imprisonment, les lieux de culte torture and et execution of men and others who resisted the suppression et of Buddhism. Les moines ou tout autre qui résiste à cette politique de Theravada Buddhism is the predominant religion in Cambodia et la religion principale au Cambodge. Et la plupart des Khmer sont bouddhistes. But these principles inspire all aspects of Khmer life. Les principes bouddhiques inspirent tous les aspects de la vie d'un Khmer, de la, vie Khmer, de la naissance aux études de l'adolescence, le mariage, la vie de famille et finalement la mort. For centuries, all education Pendant des siècles, toute l'instruction s'est faite dans les pagodes. L'enseignement était fait par des moines bouddhistes. Prior to the period, at least, Avant le régime du Kampuchea démocratique, au moins 85% des Cambodges étaient des bouddhistes pratiquants. Article 20 of the Constitution of the Democratic Republic Constitution du Kampuchea démocratique every citizen of Kampuchea que has tout the citoyen du Kampuchea a le droit à la liberté right de culte toute religion et le droit de non culte selon toute religion les religions réactionnaires qui sont au détriment du Kampuchea démocratique et du peuple du Kampuchea sont absolument interdits dans la pratique toutes les religions étaient considérées comme réactionnaires et devaient être éliminées Because it was viewed as an exploitative Il fallait bannir le bouddhisme institution. car il était considéré comme une institution sociale d'exploitation. Mais surtout, of royalty le bouddhisme for était the vast majority un autre centre de loyauté pour la majorité des Cambodgiens. As such, et donc, it represented a possible source le bouddhisme représentait une source possible d'opposition au PCK. As Yunyat, the minister of propaganda, Comme Yunyat, la ministre de la Propagande, a dit à un journaliste yougoslave lors de sa visite en 1978 that Buddhism le bouddhisme incompatible était with revolution. incompatible avec la révolution. You will hear numerous accounts of how Vous entendrez CPK cadres plusieurs témoignages sur la façon dont les cadres du PCK, prohibited the practice partout au pays, Buddhism ont interdit de façon absolue la pratique du bouddhisme et ont, et ont persécuté les bouddhistes en raison de leur foi. The following witness testimony describes what happened when the CPK suivant décrit took over The court village in Kondal district. Ce qui s'est passé lorsque le PCK a pris le contrôle du village de Takot au district de Kamal. On... Ils n'ont pas autorisé les cérémonies. The Tous the les bons ont été défroqués. The village chiefs and the sub district chiefs announced that les chefs religious beliefs de were not permitted. Ont déclaré. They said that the students and intellectuals and monks Were all petty, was was que la foi était interdite, que les étudiants, les enemies. intellectuels, les bons étaient tous des de classe moyenne, the ils étaient des ennemis. Ils ont dit que ceux qui portaient ces people. costumes étaient des féodaux qui du sang du peuple. The CPK forcibly disrobed Le PCK all Buddhist monks a défroqué de force presque Cambodia. tous les bons et les non En beaucoup cas, ils ont été forcés de marier. As one former monk cas, stated, none compliance comme un ancien moine l'a dit, that the cadres would la report you to upper echelon and they would take you out, meaning you would go into a grave pit. Et For Buddhists, it was not possible to object. Dans une fosse. Pour les Buddhists, Another donc witness pas recalls how CPK cadres instructed the monks to Quit being a rappelle comment les cadres du PCK ont donné des ordres aux moines qu'ils devaient se défroquer, sinon ils seraient exécutés et prendraient leur foi 
pour euh, les faire frire monk et les manger. Has testified that Un ancien moine monks who a témoigné to this rope que was sent ceux qui refusaient d'être défroqués étaient envoyés food. dans une forêt inhabitée sans nourriture. He goes on to state, Il a aussi déposé I used to hear rumors that monks are disease carriers that suck the people's que blood. Nous avions entendu que les moines After the monks were disrobed, their robes were an, and items inside the pagoda were gathered up and thrown away. Après At that time, all the statues euh, were smashed, they said. You bow down in front of Buddha. You bow down in front of cement. Placing your palms together to respect Buddhist monks is like respecting the local children. The persecution of monks was systematic and consistent throughout the country. This is how one former monk describes the process. The orders came from the Khmer Rouge upper echelon. The sector ordered the district, euh, and the district ordered the sub-district, and the sub-district ordered the sub-district monks' committee to disrobe the monks. When they came to order us to leave the monkhood, they insulted us by saying we were leeches, blood-sucking, Parasitic worms, and if we refused to leave the monkhood, they would send us si to the upper on There were two monks who refused. Anka took them, Deux and they were never seen to return. Les a pris et ils ne sont After revenus. we left the monkhood, the Khmer Rouge had us Après to do labor, and at each of the lifestyle meetings, they had us build ourselves. They cursed us, saying we were the lies of the society, lazy people who were used to easy lives. Saying we were the lies of the society, lazy people who were used to easy lives, sleeping and eating, and they told us to sell Anka unconditionally. They were used to easy lives, sleeping and eating, and they told us to sell Anka unconditionally. The CPK also systematically desecrate. And destroyed Buddhist places of worship. Many pagodas and monasteries were converted into non religious and sacrilegious uses, such as prisons, torture centers, pig sites, and warehouses. The following specific sites are included in the closing order. Wat Dom Nat Trajung in Kampot province, Wat Som Rao Knong in Bat Dom Bong province, Wat Kiri Rum in Bat Dom Bong province, Wat Chom Ba Thom in Swai Rien province, Wat Ta Kut and Wat Me in Kandal province, Wat Tlok in Swai Wat Chai Rien province, Wat Chai Mong Kul in Stung Trai province, Wat An Tung Vien in Kroche province, and those discovered at the Tram Cooperatives. Wat Som Rao Knong in Bat Dom Bong was converted into a security office where 15 monasteries were destroyed and prisoners were detained in a building behind the main pagoda. Many of the prisoners were executed and buried in nearby pits. A witness now, a Buddhist nun, describes her post-1979 observations of Wat Kirirum, which was converted into a security center by the CPK. I went up there to join the clergy, and I saw bones. 
I saw the hole that been bored in the south wall of Watkiri Rum and galvanized tin had been placed to allow the blood to drain. Khmer Rouge cutters also routinely destroyed religious artifacts throughout the country. Most of the Buddha statues were destroyed and thrown into a pond or river close to the temple. A former monk describes his 1979 return to his warmer pagoda in Kampot province. I saw that only the framework of the sanctuary remained. The roof tiles were gone and only one light monk residence remained. None of Buddha images remained. At Wat An Tung Wien in Kroche province, once a majestic 100-pillar pagoda, 14 Buddha statues were smashed and thrown into the river. In the words of one witness, once the destruction began, 10 days later the temple was completely gone. In some cases, monks tried to resist this relentless destruction of their religion. The head monk of Wat Dom Nat Rajung in Kampot province held out for longer than most. A witness recalls going to visit him and warn him that Anka spoke about monks as worms and leeches sucking people's blood. Despite witness pleas, the monk refused to leave this pagoda. The monk was subsequently captured by CPK cutters and never seen again. Witnesses convey a sense of helplessness when asked to recall the way in which they were made to abandon their religious beliefs. One witness when asked why the monks disrobed and why he personally did not practice his faith during the regime said. Because they had lost faith, they did not permit religion. No one dared to object for fear they, the Khmer Rouge, would call them to give instructions to re-educate. I did not dare light incense in my house. I did not dare to do even that. Persecution of Buddhists is a crime against humanity that affected millions of Cambodians in the 1975-1979 period. In a systematic attempt to eradicate this religion, the CPK leadership caused the death of countless Buddhists and subjected an entire population to serious physical and psychological harm. Even today, those dark and tumultuous days remain in the minds of all Buddhists in Cambodia. And to this day, many suffer from the trauma they experience as a result of the violent suppression of their religion. Forced marriage. I will now deal with the crimes committed in the context of CPK's policy of forced marriage. As I described earlier, the CPK sought to eradicate every remnant of culture which had defined life in the Cambodian society for centuries. This included the imposition of forced marriage upon hundreds of thousands of young men and women throughout the country under a policy designed and directed by the CPK Party Center. The forced marriage policy entailed gross breaches of human rights and the commission of rape on a massive scale. Victims of forced marriage were stripped of their pride and dignity and suffered severe physical and psychological harm. Forced marriages were inherent part of CPK's policy of enslavement 
du PCK. They were instituted to increase the country's total population drastically. One witness recalls a 1978 meeting in Kampong Chenang at which Pol Pot instructed lower echelons to arrange marriages for people so that the regime could ensure that the population grew between 20 and 30 million. Nguyen Chia has stated that the CPK had devised a four-year plan to increase the population of Cambodia. But forced marriages were also instituted as an attack on the most important structure of the traditional Cambodian society. The family. As Elizabeth Becker wrote, family life had to be eliminated. The state had to serve the authority of the family if it was to survive. The family was the most potent, hence, most feared of all relationships of the former society. Where traditional Cambodian marriage preparations and ceremonies had been intricate affairs involving entire families, the CPK reduced marriages to austere forced couplings, systematically implemented by Anka. Nagagawa Katsumi, who has published research on the practices of forced marriage under the CPK regime, describes this as follows. The process of a marriage during the Khmer Rouge regime was completely different from the Cambodian traditional way, where a groom acts the approval of the parents of the bride. Traditional marriage ceremony lasts three days, including numerous numbers of ceremonies, and all the relatives and villagers participate in those ceremonies to celebrate newlyweds. On the contrary to such a tradition, during the Khmer Rouge regime, the Anka, through the village chief or the senior female leaders, orders an individual that you are getting married. The forced marriage ceremonies often involve large groups of men and women. Sometimes hundreds were married at a single ceremony. Often, the couples had never met or knew very little about one another. The ceremonies were presided over by local CPK cadres and entailed only a vow of commitment to the regime. One man recalls the arbitrary matching of couples at his forced marriage ceremony. They arranged us in numerical order by having women to stay on one side and men to stay at another side. Then they turned off the light and they had men and women walk towards each other to catch each other's hand. There were 117 couples in that ceremony. We could not escape because there were many soldiers guarding around that place. Another witness who, as chief of a sector secretary, presided over forced marriage ceremonies, recalls specific instructions from CPK leadership. I was asked to match men and women, and then men had to be two or three years older than the women. New people men would be arranged for new people couples, while base people would be arranged for base people. It was the policy of the Khmer Rouge regime that people reached certain age they hold a marry, to marry. Sorry. Uh, rather, they had to marry. In imposing forced marriages, the CPK authorities removed the fundamental involvement of personal emotion and love. 
factors that to each of us play a central part in the selection of our life partners. The imposition of forced marriages also represented another method in which religion was suppressed by the regime. Buddhist monks were forced to abandon their vows of celibacy and marry. Cham Muslims were informed that they were to be made to marry non-Muslims. There was absolutely no regard for the individual, rather individual pain and suffering such, such acts would cause given one's individual spiritual beliefs. Witnesses will testify that in the vast majority of cases either one in both or both parties did not consent to the marriage. Nonetheless, the victims did not object for fear of the punishment that would follow. This is how a witness recalls a forced marriage ceremony. The men did not cry during the marriages, but the females cried hard inside their hearts, since they did not dare cry out loud. As for the men and women who were to be married, they were not connected Rather, they were not concerned about whether they loved one another or not. They were just worried about their lives. That's all. A female witness who had thrice attempted to object to the marriage ordered by her company chairman was bluntly told, Comrade, you refuse? So we will act accordingly to the refusal. Her mind flashed, or flashed back to the event where another young woman had been arrested and killed upon refusing marriage. In defeat, she acquiesced to marriage as ordered by Arca. In some circumstances, knowing that a forced marriage was imminent, individuals could ask to marry someone they knew. A few lucky ones were thus able to marry in consenting circumstances. However, the evidence also shows that there were numerous instances of women being treated as mer property, as war booty awarded to Anka to soldiers. A former soldier during the regime recalls, one good thing about the Khmer Rouge was that if you wanted to marry someone, you could suggest it to the Anka, and if she did not agree, then the Anka would force her. In many cases, women were given as a reward to handicapped soldiers who had been injured in combat. One woman recalled how her husband who had lost a leg, was able to choose his wife. Anka gave him the right to choose a wife, and this, he suggested to Anka that he'd like to marry me. Following forced marriage ceremonies, CPK cadres would dictate the interactions between couples to ensure the marriages were consummated. Inevitably, Rape in the context of forced marriage occurred frequently. As one witness went on to explain, the commune chiefs ordered her to sleep with her husband three days after their marriage. I was very scared of my husband, but there were militiamen eavesdropping below the house. I did not want to make love with my husband, but I forced myself to do so. A victim who was interviewed in the course of research carried out by Nakagawa Katsumi described what happened after she had refused to conjugate her marriage for three nights. The Anka asked my husband to get education, and they warned him that if we still didn't have sex, they would kill us. When he got back home, he told me about that, and persuaded me to have sex with him. If I hadn't agreed to have sex with him, I would have been killed. 
Another victim describes being forced to have sex with her new husband as follows. When I refused to have sex with him after the marriage, he reported it to the carders. Then they came to catch me, and then in the house they forced me to take off my clothes in order that the man, the husband, came or can, can rape me. They said, if I do not agree, they will kill me. The shame and pain which these victims experienced in is beyond our imagination. The following account published as part of compilation by Nagagawa Katsumi describes the experiences of another victim. After the ceremony, the soldiers came to observe us, ensuring that we loved each other and had sex. If not, they would kill, they would kill us. I saw them through some holes up the wall of my house. As part of the forced marriage policy, there were harsh repercussions for those who sought to deviate from the regime's instructions. Couples who formed romantic relationships without permission were punished severely. We will put before you numerous accounts of imprisonment in security centers of those who were accused of the supposed crime of immorality. In his text entitled Paul Pot's Little Red Book, Henri Loca illustrates how his policy was enforced by the CPK cadres. Numerous were the cases of arrest, imprisonment, and execution for simple adultery between consenting adults, including parents who were very much in love with each other, but from whom the Anka withheld the permission to marry. Your Honours, evidence will show that the system of forced marriage put in place by the accused entailed the commission of crimes of rape, torture, murder, and other inhumane acts on a mass scale. These crimes had devastating had a devastating effect on the Cambodian society where traditions of family life are so strongly ingrained. In many ways, forced marriage affected the complete surrender of Cambodian society and culture because it sought to manipulate, control, and destroy what is core to all Cambodians, the family unit. I would now like uh, to provide an overview of the crimes committed at the security centers. Security centers. As my fellow co-prosecutor will illustrate, many years before assuming control of the country, the CPK leadership had resolved to use violence as an instrument for the fulfillment of its political aims. Arrests, torture, and executions of supposed enemies were standard CPK practice well before April 1975. Shortly after taking power, the CPK extended its security apparatus every corner of the country. Security centers were established within every zone, sector, and district, as well as within military divisions. The evidence indicates that more than 200 such centers existed. Eleven of these security centers are included in the closing order. There are S21 in Phnom Penh, Kokshang in today Sihanoukville province, Prey Damray Srot in Kampong Chnang province, Krang Tachan in Takai province, Sang in Kandal province, Kok Duit in Krache province, Phnom Kraul in Mundolkiri province, Wat Lok in Swairing province, O Kansai in Rotanakiri, Wat Kiri Rum in today 
Space Button Bomb Province and North Zone Security Center in Siem Reap. As with the forced labor strikes, the evidence will show remarkable consistency in the organization, structure and operation of the security offices. This reflects the fact that they functioned as part of a single centrally supervised Apparatus. As at 1975, the party security apparatus were described, rather, was directed primi primarily at former officials and soldiers of the Khmer Republic regime, class enemies, and those who did not comply with the party's orders. However, after 1976, new categories of enemies were added. The accused became obsessed with the idea that their rule was being undermined from within, and order waves of international, rather, of internal purchase to seek out and destroy supposed the CIA, KGB and Vietnamese spies. I emerged, rather emergent or real, in the CPK's language, the enemies were to be found and swept cleanly away, as historian David Chandler stated in his book uh, Voices from S21. Counter-revolutionary enemies were continuously created and purchased were continuously needed to ensure that the safety of the party center and to maintain the revolution's purity and momentum. Enemies were thought to be everywhere. Elizabeth Becker, a journalist, offers a similar analysis of the CPK's evolving purchase. A swing in party politics or a change in revolutionary theory created new categories of enemies. Fear of enemy clashes, rather enemy classes, was replaced by fear of enemy elements who had infiltrated the party. The victims of security apparatus also included other groups, as I will describe in more detail later. Starting in 1977, people of Vietnamese and Cham ethnic cities were systematically sought out and murdered at security centers in various parts of the country. Furthermore, those who were suspected of immorality as defined by the regime were also subject to imprisonment and execution. Finally, as I discussed earlier, numerous victims were arrested and imprisoned at forced labor sites for trivial accusations such as inadvertently uh, rather inadvertently damaging equipment, not working hard enough, being sick or stealing food. Under the guidance of these accused, the CPK cadres viewed these meaningless transgressions as evidence of subversive activity against the party. The evidence we will put before the court will show the pretend absurdity of the reasons which led to the arrest of countless innocent victims. To use just one example, a witness has testified that he was imprisoned at the Kok Luwich Security Center and interrogated because informers had reported that he preferred a Soviet-made hole, an act against Anka. In his book Voices from S21, David Chandler gives further examples of this phenomenon. Prisons who had been engaged in agriculture confessed to wrecking farm machinery, flooding, burning, stealing, and uprooting crops, maiming, killing, and losing track of livestock, and arbitrarily cutting down fruit trees. Factory workers confessed to wrecking machinery, stealing materials, making faulty goods, and spotting, rather plotting with co-workers to sabotage 
production. A former cadre who attended the uh, meetings presided uh, over by the mock. The Southwest Zone Secretary sums up the sheer irrationality of CPK security policy. What I did not understand was that even small matters were considered CIA as well. If there were tens and hundreds of thousands of these people, where did the Americans get the money to pay their salaries? It did not matter that many of these arrests did not actually pose a threat to CPK's absolute rule. It did not matter that in many cases the victims were actually innocent of any supposed offense, rather offense against the regime. To become a victim of CPK security apparatus, it was enough to have been implicated. Crimes would be invented and guilt confirmed through torture and interrogation. Many people were arrested and imprisoned simply because they were related to an individual who had been identified as a potential enemy. Thus, Women and children were detained in several of the prisons, including S21, Prey Dam Rai Srot, Krang Tachan, Sang, Kok Duok, Wat Lok, and the North Zone Security Center. The security centers were highly organized facilities located within heavily guarded compounds with guards on duty 24 hours a day. Their core functions were to detain and interrogate the suspected enemies, extract their confessions, report the confessions to CPK authorities, and ultimately execute the prisoners. prisoners. Several of the security centers, such as Kokchiang, Phnom Krao, and Kok Luit, also had the education facilities where prisoners whose final fate had not been decided were sent for tempering through hard labor. While the numbers of prisoners varied, even the smallest of the centers could hold hundreds of prisoners, the largest were S21, which had the capacity to hold 2,000 to 3,000 prisoners at any given time, and the North Zone secu secu rather Security Center, which held over 500 people at a time. The security centers operated at different levels of CPK's regional and military hierarchies, for example, Prey Dom Reisrot, Kok Duit, and Watlok were district level prisons. Phnom Kraul and Koch Xiong were under the supervision of sector secretaries. The North Zone Security Center reported directly to the leader of the North Zone. O Consang functioned as a division-level prison under Division 801. The president interrupts, uh, since it is now appropriate time for lunch adjournment, the chamber will take uh, this adjournment and resume by 1.30. The public are invited uh, to return to the courtroom and the public gallery by 1.30. The security personnel are now instructed uh, to take uh, the three accused uh, back to the detention facility and return them back to the courtroom by the set time. Some change, Groucho. Greffier, all rise.